Hey everyone, today I'm going to try to go over some basic things that I've been learning about the forest vegetation simulator that uh, is owned by the Forest Service. Um, mainly in this video, I'm just going to go over the correct formatting for different data that needs to be input into uh, the simulator if you're using your own data. Um, so one of the first things I would recommend doing if you're using your own data is I would create a spreadsheet that has um, FVS stand in it, FVS tree in it, and the FVS plot in it, um, all in separate columns. Then this will help you keep track of your stand CNs and stand IDs and plot CNs and plot IDs, because it starts to get confusing. Um, so this has been helpful for me. Um, Secondly, um, you want to make sure that formatting is correct, um, even if it takes some extra time to um, look over or research um, these different columns and and um, different variables. It's it's worth it because um, if you you can make mistakes like such as I made, where I was inputting the dBH as a um, in centimeters instead of inches <clears throat> and I kept getting an error when run, running the, the simulator and the main thing I noticed was the graph uh, and the table um, so you could see here the basal area dropped off um, right at the beginning uh, when it should be increasing um, and then also here you see in the table that the basal area dropped significantly also this was because what I believe is the uh, the model, since it, the the measurements were in centimeters, it wasn't matching up with the age of the trees and other things. So the model um, was basically not running correctly. So that's one thing to just watch out for. If you have this graph, um, yeah, it, it could be that you're putting in the wrong um, wrong measurements. Um, okay, so then I'm gonna just go through one by one these spreadsheets and try to just explain the best I can what I've learned so far. Some of this may be wrong. Uh, I'm gonna try to only say what I know, but if I misspeak or if I have something incorrect, I'm still learning this simulator. So um, feel free to correct me in the comments or um, yeah. It's, I'll just try my best here. Okay, so first off, we have these four spreadsheets. Um, and you can get the blank spreadsheets by going to the um, Forest Vegetative, Vegetative Simulator. And in the under the import data, there's this um, install blank database. You can install it there and then um, then you can look at it here with the uh, with these under the view and edit existing tables. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to download it from here, but I know that there's a way to download it. So you can get these, you can get the, the database empty. Um, I'll try to add a link in the comment um, for where you can download the database at. Okay, so secondly, we have these four spreadsheets, the group, um, add files. This is just, um, you don't really need to worry too much about this, just um, from my understanding, that makes sure that the stand, uh, the FVS, this third line here, the FVS data underscore data, Dot db. I don't think it really matters what that is, but just make sure that those two match up in the um, stands and plot. Um, otherwise, I don't think you should really need to mess with this file. Um, okay, so that takes us to the stand um, in it. And this is a required um, sheet that must be filled out. Um, the tree in it is also required. The plot in it is optional, so that's not necessary, but we'll go over it. Okay, so stand CN and stand ID. Um, 
these are both can be pretty much any number. Just use your Excel spreadsheet that I had showed to try to keep track of it because um, it needs to be consistent over all three sheets. So Stan CN 101 here needs to be Stan CN 101 if for all the trees that are in that stand. The variant, this is PN is Pacific Northwest. Um, I'm going to try to compile a, a PDF with all the codes and variants in one place because it's been kind of difficult trying to look around for different manuals for all the codes um, or variants. But uh, so if you're using Pacific Northwest, then that would be the variant there. Inventory year is the year that the initial inventory took place. This all stands project inventory forest type variant we went over. Location code, I'm going to work on compiling that. Um, six, seven, or 612 is the um, Sayusla National Forest. Um, and the forest type, I believe, um, I could be wrong, but I'm using this, uh, this code, which I found here in the, the um, Appendix B, I believe. Um, of the FVS, um, uh, of an FVS manual I found, but um, the, the, this is the different um, forest type codes and group codes based on, I believe these are what the dominant species is in that area. Um, okay, let's go back and keep moving here. Um, so then, those are all, I'm pretty sure, op, like mandatory conditions. Datum, I think, is uh, optional, um, but I put NAD 83 because that's what they use in their training data. Region 6, that's uh, Pacific Northwest. Forest, um, I believe, okay, maybe, yeah, so maybe 12 is the um, national, so I use the national forest, not 612. Um, I guess they combine those for the location code. District, I'm not sure. I called the Forest Service and they said the Sayusla National Forest is either District 0, District 1, or District 8. So um, I need to try to confirm that. Age is the age of the stand. Um, this basal area, um, basal area factor, Inventory plot size, those are a little confusing to me, but we used a one-tenth of an acre plot, and I believe that for the, a one-tenth of an acre fixed area plot, that the basal area factor would be negative 10, and the inventory plot size is 10. Breakpoint DBH, I believe, is the minimum uh, size trees that were measured during the survey. So for us, we only measured trees that were six inches or larger. Number of plots is how many plots are in this stand. So here in the plot sheet, you can see we have five plots. So that's five for num plots. Um, Non-stocking plots, I'm really not sure what that is. Sampling weight is the size of the stand in acres. So I believe that you can use a shapefile in ArcGIS Pro and that you can um, estimate how both size of your sand and acres that way. That's what I'm going to try at least. Um, I don't think any of these other fields are mandatory, so I left them all blank. Um, but yeah, you could definitely look into them more. I'll probably try to look into some of them more, anything that might help make the model more accurate. but. For now, I'm just trying to get a basic run of the model. <clears throat> so now we move on to the tree and it spreadsheet, the last of the mandatory spreadsheets. And the tree in it, again, we have our stand CN, stand ID, plot CN, plot ID, stand plot CN, stand plot ID. If you just use that spreadsheet and use the format that I have and just keep consistent with your stand, your plots that are in your stands. Um, I, that's I just the best way I can explain how to do it. 
because that's that was confusing to me for a long time. But you have to just keep track of your plots and which plots are in which stand and which trees are with within those plots. Um, so tree CN and tree ID, I believe that these can be repetitive for different plots. Um, at least the tree ID, tree CN, I'm not sure. So I've just been using a new um, value each time. It seems to be working. Tag ID, I don't think this really matters either. I've been just using a new value each time for that as well. Site tree flag, I'm not sure what that means, but they had zero on their training data set, so I put zero. Tree count, that's just how many trees. It's normally going to be one, um, but I guess in some situations you might have more. History, okay, this is, um, I think this is a pretty crucial one. This is basically the tree health code from my understanding. And I'm a little fuzzy on it, but <clears throat> I believe that, um, let's see, zero through five, uh, zero through five is going to be a live tree. Six through seven is gonna be a tree that has recent mortality. And um, six through nine is going to be an old dead old tree, a dead tree or a tree that's been dead for a long time. So I think six would be recently dead and nine would be um, dead for a long time. I could be wrong though, but that's what I think so far. Species, um, it's usually just the two letter, like Doug fir, Western hemlock, um, red cedar. You can find these online. The, the, the species codes are relatively simple to find. I'm gonna, I'll still try to compile them into one place. Um, diameter in inches, again, just be careful here with your units. I don't think any of these other fields are mandatory. I think that they will only help make the model more accurate. I believe that we, you can get the um, slope, and um, elevation, I'm not sure if that's on this or the other sheet, but I believe you can get those from ArcGIS through a DEM file, a digital elevation model using LiDAR. Um, age, uh, I, think the, I think the model will have an equation for age based off DBH. I could be wrong, but... Um, I guess if you have age, then yeah, that'd probably help make it quite accurate. Okay, and so the last data sheet we'll go through is the plot data sheet, which is optional. I guess you can look at FES at a plot level. I haven't exactly figured out how to do that yet, but our data was in plots. Um, so I've been using the plot data sheet along with the scan data sheet. So the only advice that I can give again is just use that spreadsheet to keep track of your plots, which trees are in which plot, which plots are within each stand. Um, just make sure your numbers, CNs and IDs are consistent. Variant again, Pacific Northwest inventory, and then this will be the same as the, um, uh, what was it, stand? Yeah, the groups under the stand. I'm gonna to try to get a more um, thorough, uh, thorough uh, legend for these codes. Region, forest, we went through district and just try to make sure that they're all consistent through the sheets. Um, Cause I think if you have them inconsistent throughout the sheets, I think it'll cause errors. The age, um, again, these are all just um, repeats. This is actually an error here in my data because um, these were different on my other sheet. These were different on my stand sheet, so I need to fix those um, to have them match these. So that's good that I was going through this to realize that. Um, Okay, well, I hope that this video is somewhat helpful. Again, I'm just learning. So if I said any of this wrong or um, if I'm just totally off, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to learn here. So 
uh, dealing with what I can. Hopefully, I'll be able to help make some better tutorials for inputting your own data um, into the FBS model. All right. Thanks for watching and have a great day.